Oh yeah, yeah. What's up, YouTube? I want to talk about the altars that I bought this year. I've been making reviews and comparisons in the previous uh, months. Now that the end of the year is coming, I kind of want to go through these purchases and let you guys know if I was happy or not. Maybe some of you are looking for a good deal for Black Friday or something. And I'm sure that they'll go into discount for the, in the next few months, especially because we can expect quite some uh, new models coming out early next year. I'm looking at the Lone Peak 6. I'm sure we're going to get the Lone Peak 7 in January already. Of course, maybe the Rivera 3 will come in March, maybe. So let's take a look at these shoes. How do I rate them? How happy am I? So let's get started. I'm just going to go down the order of how happy I am with the shoes. I think starting, I got to say, Lone Peak 6, they were the biggest flop for me. Uh, for 2022. I know the Lone Peak is a fan favorite among Ultra fans. I know many people love them, especially in the, in the US, they are the best selling Ultra shoe. It is nice and wide, nice and roomy. They are comfortable. I did enjoy them in the first few runs, but after about 250 kilometers, I just couldn't run in them anymore. It just wasn't comfortable, especially if I do a lot of commuting runs, so run on a road and then in the trails, it just got uncomfortable, I couldn't run fast. I noticed myself just slowing down. My running technique kind of suffered because of it. I just didn't enjoy them anymore. They do look awesome. I do enjoy using them when I go hiking, but for running, not my kind of shoe. So I retired them early. So talking about Low Peak 7 early next year, I don't think I'll be buying them myself. Next up would be the Rivera 2. I bought them somewhere in March or maybe even April because I didn't know which shoe to get. Um, I was waiting for the Escalante 3 to, to be released. The Torrent 6 wasn't released yet. My Torrent 5s were worn out. My Escalante 2.5s were worn out. So I needed a new pair of shoes. So I thought I have the Rivera 1, which I uh, retired after 500 kilometers. How about the Rivera 2? Bought them as expected. They are a decent running shoe. I did enjoy running in them, nothing that really wowed me. I did some long distance running in them, which I didn't enjoy that much. They are re really basic and compared to other autos, they are fairly cheap. So in that regard, they're nice, but they're not my kind of shoe. The Rivera 3 will come out uh, early next year. I'm guessing March again. Um, they will add two millimeter stack heights to it. I'm not a fan of that. Will probably not be getting it myself. Which shoe comes next? Oh, this is a tough one. Now I gotta admit, I think it's the Ultra Vanish Carbon. Not because of the performance. I really enjoy running races in them. I PB'd my half marathon time in them twice this year. And I think for racing, they're amazing. But honestly, 250 euros is just too expensive. I think back then, if you really compared the pricing to the US, where it was $240, 250 euros back then before the euro started to crash again is $270. That's $30 different between the European and the American market. And I think $240 is already pretty expensive. So Ultra, please don't make the uh, next shoe as expensive. I would not be paying that amount of money again. I see they, they're on discount now everywhere. I would do that, but not for that amount of money. They were comfortable, they're a little bit snug, but I enjoyed it when I go racing. They still look good after about 70 kilometers. Of course, there's the first few scratches on the bottom and chafing on the of the outsole, but that's to be expected of a racing shoe. Then we have, ooh, where do I go next? I wanna say it's the, hmm, oh, this is a tough one. I wanna say it's the Escalante 3. And now I'm already starting about the shoes that I really, really am enjoying. And the Escalante 3 is a shoe that I really am enjoying. I think I've run over 300 kilometers in them at least. And I enjoy them. I like running 20 kilometers in them. I like running shorter distance in them. I like running fast intervals in them. They are a shoe that can be used anytime. However, they're not for running in the rain. It rains a lot here in Germany. It's raining today. It rained yesterday all day. And they are a shoe that I will be skipping every time it rains because the upper, which is very comfortable, it's like a sock-like upper, I enjoy it. But when it's raining, it just soaks up a hell lot of water. And you're basically running in water the whole time. It just slushes around. It feels horrible. 
other than that, I like the fit, I like the uh, midsole, it feels good. The outsole is still looking fairly decent after 300 something kilometers. So definitely a shoe that I would get again. I can recommend that one. Then which shoe, then it comes to the Mont Blanc. I raced in them this year. Um, I, did a, uh, I did a 48 kilometer race in the Dolomites of Italy. I really enjoyed it. I think they were great. Um, however, of course, they have their flaws. They are particularly nice to race in on really runnable trails. Compared to other autos, they are fairly lightweight. As long as you're not kicking any rocks, they are great. There's just no protection around the toe box. If you kick a rock, your toe will hurt. The heel cup is not as great as they should be. They're missing an eyelet for the laces for a better uh, heel lock. The tongue is too short. But don't know, these are all negative parts, but actually I do really enjoy running in them. There's this rocker shape towards the front, and I notice when I'm running, they really just make me want to run faster, and it's really enjoyable. I really think they are really comfortable, they're nice and stretchy. I really hope for the successor that they will improve the heel cup and the lacing, maybe a little bit more protection around the toe box, but overall, I'm really happy that I got them this year, and I raced in them twice actually this year, so they definitely wowed me. Now thinking about, of course, the Vibram outsole, Great grip. Now the last two, and this was a tough one, but I needed to make a decision of which one I preferred. But the shoe that I loved the most this year that really wowed me was the Ultra Vanish Tempo. So let's put them aside, I'll talk about them later. I wanna talk about the outboard first. I wasn't expecting too much, like a hybrid shoe. They talk about having the best of both worlds. Often you get the worst of both worlds as well. But I think they really did a good job. They didn't nail it uh, on all points, but I think um, it definitely did wow me. I noticed that whenever I go out for a run and I'm not sure what kind of run I wanna do, I just kinda of wanna just head out, enjoy my run. I don't even know where I'm gonna run. I realized I'm just gonna get the output because sometimes I end up in the woods. Sometimes I end up on like loose gravel or roads and I think the grip is great on dry surfaces. The upper is nice and comfortable. At first, I thought it was a little bit too snug, but after a few runs, I feel that it has kind of the upper has stretched a little bit. They're really comfortable. I like running in them. I can't run fast in them, but that's not what they're for. For me, I think I can run like 20, 30 kilometers in them really comfortably. Would have preferred a slightly wider fit, but I don't have such wide feet that that's such an issue. They are definitely one of my biggest surprises of 2022. And now towards the Ultra Vanish Tempo. And I also had low expectations of them, mainly because I had already bought the Ultra Vanish Carbon. They were my racing shoe. I thought maybe I would also train in them, but I decided against that because I didn't want to kind of wear them down. I wanted a shoe that I could comfortably train in. And that's the thing. They are so much more comfortable than the Vanish Carbon. The padded heel cup is really comfortable around the shoe. The tongue is nice and comfortable. The upper is nice and breathable. The grip on the outsole is decent. I run a lot of loose gravel, uh, so they, in, in that regard, not that great. But if you're running on the road, somewhere the surface is easier. They definitely have enough grip. The rebound is amazing, and the rocker geometry helps me run fast in them. I really enjoy running my tempo runs, my interval runs in them. So if, I, I've kind of forgot how, how much I've run in them, but um, I do tend to just run shorter distances in them, so nothing more. I think the maximum that I ran in them was like 10 kilometers. Anything more, I do tend to go for another shoe because my feet do tend to swell up when I run long distance, so that will get a little bit more uncomfortable in them. I'm not too happy with the lacing system, such webbed eyelets. It's not easy to make them tight and loosen them up, so I hope they'll do regular eyelets uh, in any kind of successor. But over the past few months, whenever I want to do a fast training session, they are amazing. They pair up really great with the Vanish Carbon. They are my training shoe when I do speed sessions and the Ultra Vanish Carbon is my racing shoe. So those were the Ultras that I bought this year. Do you have any questions about any of these shoes? Feel free to drop me a note down below in the comment section. I'm really happy to always talk about Ultras. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.